So for section 10.5, we're going to be multiplying and dividing radical expressions. Uh, the key here is, is mostly multiplying. The, the dividing, we're going to be um, learning how to simplify that, really. We're not going to leave radicals in the denominator. So we're going to be simplifying the dividing uh, by multiplying. But, but let's go ahead and start with just the multiplying. Here I have these two binomials that are being multiplied. This is basically a FOIL question. I, I hate that. It's, it's really just what distributing. The 7 distributes... And then the three distributes. Now you got to be careful. You got to remember your rules from the previous sections, because seven times root five is not the square root of thirty-five. You only multiply them together if they're both roots. So you're like, so what do I do? Well, seven times root five is just seven root five. It's still just seven times root five. Just like seven times root two is just seven square root of two. Now this next one, square root of three times the square root of five, those are both square roots. So those multiply together, root 3 times root 5 is the square root of 15. Square root of 3 times the square root of 2, how about minus the square root of 6, okay? And if this needed to be simplified, if um, I could break any of these apart and bring anything out, you would need to simplify that, um, but that doesn't this time. That 15 is just a 5 and a 3, so nothing comes out. And the 6 is a 3 and a 2, so there's no groups of 2 to come out, so that is simplified. If you um, don't like distributing this way, you could sit there and multiply it like this. So what would this be? 7 root 5, 7 root 2, 5 root 3 minus root 15, minus root 6. Just make sure you write your answer as, you know, as that expression. Okay, But I don't care. If that, if that helps you multiply them out, then go ahead and write it out that way. It's a nice way of kind of visually organizing it. Next one is a special one. You don't see it yet, but um, this is called multiplying by its conjugate. And that's if I have um, a plus b and a minus b. Something special is going to happen with the radicals. If you're not sure, let's just go ahead and do this. Um, either way, root 10 times root 10 is the square root of 10 times 10, 100. Now I'm going to rewrite that as just 10. Minus 10 times 3, square root of 30, plus 3 times 10, square root of 30, plus, uh, minus, sorry, root 3 times root 3, which is square root of 9. The most common mistake is people will see those and then just go, oh, 9. No, 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 no. Square root of 9 is not 9. It is 3. So that's the multiplying part. The difference between this and the last one is things can actually simplify quite a bit even. Because I have a plus, plus root 30 and a minus root 30, so those basically zero out, leaving me with 10 minus 3, which is 7. Let's keep going. 7 minus 3 squared. You're like, ah, I got this one. That's just uh, 7 minus 9. No, you're wrong. Don't do that, please. a plus b squared is not a squared plus b squared. What you need to do is go, okay, this means the square root of 7 minus 3 times, because it's squared, square root of 7 minus 3. This is not one of the special conjugate ones. Why? This one's minus, this one's minus. It's not minus and plus. They have to be opposites for the conjugates to work. But it still will simplify. Square root of 7 times the square root of 7. How about the square root of 49? I'm okay replacing that with the 7. Square root of 7 times 3. Those do not multiply together. So it's 3 root 7. This also becomes a minus 3 root 7. And last but not least, negative 3 times negative 3 is plus 9. The difference here is that these do not zero out, so don't zero those out. I can add the 7 with the 9 to give us 16. But this minus 3 minus 3 is not 0. It would be minus 6 square root of 7. So that is how I want that answer. 16 minus 6 root 7. They're like, why doesn't that become 10? Those are not like terms. Remember, this is the previous section. You cannot add these unless they're both radical 7s. So you got to know the previous section so we can build on it. Next one.
a plus b, a minus b. This is another special conjugate. Don't don't sit there and go, oh, that's great. I know what the answer is. Just still work it out. Still distribute it. All right. Because you need to see the patterns, but not just like make them a magic trick here. But what is the square root of 7, or square root of k times square root of k? Square root of k times k, k squared. That, and th that does simplify. There's a pair of k's. This just becomes k. But I'm still going to kind of go through that word. Square root of k times square root of y. How about minus square root of ky? y times k plus square root of ky. And y times y minus the square root of y squared. Square root of y squared. There's a group of 2. Out comes a y. We did say something would happen with the conjugate. Basically, we have a minus ky and a plus ky. Those are opposites, so the middle will zero out, leading us with what? Which is k minus y. Okay? What about denominators? We talked about dividing. Well, the short answer is we do not leave radicals in the denominators. We must rationalize them. And you're like, well, why? Well, because we do. No, that's a horrible answer. Really, the reason is because on the previous sections, remember how we added and subtracted? Well, when you add and subtract fractions, they're going to need a common denominator. And as complicated as it is to rationalize the denominator, what we end up with at the end is a simpler denominator to work with. So what do we do? Well, if there's a square root of b, then what we're going to do is this needs 2 because it's a square root, right? Square root of b needs 2 b's. For that to go away. So we give it another b. We can do that? Well, yeah, we can multiply. We can multiply top and bottom, but it has to be by the same thing. So the top gets multiplied by the square root of b, the bottom gets multiplied by the square root of b. So what this now becomes is the square root of b squared. That's our goal. We wanted to, we got to, so it comes out. No radical in the denominator. You're like, well, yeah, but we put one on the top. That's okay. We can't get all rid of all the radicals. But what we did is we made the denominator easier to work with. So that if I had to add and subtract, at least I'm not dealing with radicals in the denominator, right? So let's see some examples. Let's start with the numbers. Square root of 8 over 45. We've done this kind of thing before. We're going to split this as the square root of 8 over the square root of 45. 8. 2 times 2 times 2, out comes a pair of 2's. So how about 2 root 2 over square root of 45? 5 times 9, 5 times 3 times 3, a pair of 3's, so 3 root 5. This is not done. What's the problem? Well, we have to rationalize which part. The denominator is what we're worried about. Most common mistake here is that people go, well, that's easy. Just multiply the bottom by 3 root 5. I'd say, no. <laughs> Why not? Because the 3 was not the issue. You can do that, and yet it just means you're going to have to simplify more. But remember, the radical 5 is the issue. I need to rationalize the denominator. I need to get rid of the radical in the denominator. So really, all we have to multiply the top and bottom by is the root 5. Well, what does that do? Well, on the top we have 2 square root of 10. On the bottom we have 3 times the square root of 25. What is the square root of 25? Just 5. No more radicals. So 2 root 10 over 3 times 5, 15. Do not simplify that 10 and that 15. They are not like terms. They're not in the radicals. Okay, so do not simplify that. This is simplified. Break it apart. Simplify. Rationalize the denominator. That's it. Square root of 18 over 125. Once again, work to the side. 18 is 9 times 2. 3 times 3 times 2. Out comes a pair of 3's. Square root of 125, 125 is 25, quarter, 25 times 5, so 5 quarters. 
So 5 times 5 times 5. Out comes a 5. Left in there is root 5. We're not done. That will be half the credit for that question because you have simplified it a bit, but you still have to rationalize the denominator. So what's the issue? Is it this 2? Well, it's not the denominator. Is it this whole thing? No, just the, just the radical. So we are going to multiply top and bottom. It's going to need another 5. Give it another 5. On the top, we have what? 3 radical 10. On the bottom, 5 times the square root of 25. Square root of 25 cleans up. So we end up with 3 radical 10 over 25. What if we have letters? Same process. Split it apart. Square root of 50. 25 times 2. 5 times 5 times 2. How about a 5 comes out and a 2 is left inside. Uh, m to the 4th. 4 over 2. m squared comes out. 2 with nothing remaining in there. So 5m squared root 2. On the bottom, p to the 5 halves 2 with 1 remaining. So that gives us p squared with the square root of p. Now this is not done. The issue here is even though we've simplified it, we still have this crazy in the denominator. That's the issue, that radical. So what do we need? Well, since it's a square root, we need two p's. So what? Give it another p. Top becomes 5m squared, square root of 2p. Those can multiply together since they're both square roots. Over p to the third. Or if you're not sure, you could write it out. The square root of p squared is just p. So 5m squared, square root of 2p, all over. There are now 3p's down there. Completely simplified. Remember the goal, if I had to add fractions, this denominator is better to work with than this denominator. Even though the rest of it's a mess, that is still simpler for us to do. What if it's a third root? Not a big deal. I like to just say basically we give it what it means. So this is telling me I need 3. So we give the denominator What it needs to be simplified. And this time it needs groups of 3. Start by splitting it apart. Third root of 27 over the third root of 16. Third root of 27 is just 3. If you're not sure. 27 is 3 times 9, or 3 times 3 times 3. Groups of 3. That's a group of 3. Out comes a 3. Nothing remaining in there. Over third root of 16. Well, 16 is 4 times 4. How about 4 twos? What comes out is a 2. What's left inside is a third root of 2. Here's the problem. We are not going to multiply the top and the bottom by the third root of 2. Like, well, why not? Well, this needed 3 of something for it to be simplified. We just gave it two twos. This would become the third root of 4. That doesn't simplify, so that doesn't help us. What it needs is 3, so that means we're going to give it two more twos. Why? 
Well, now the top becomes 3 times the third root of 4 over 2 times the third root of 8. See, the third root of 8 can be simplified. That's just 2. 3, third root of 4, all over 4. So be careful with that. It needs, it needs 3 to be simplified, so we gave it 2 more 2's. It had 1, it needed 3, so we gave it 2 more. Next one, third root of m to the 12th over third root of n. Well, third root of m to the, m to the 12th, 12 over 3, this is just m to the 4th, third root of n. This is not okay. We need to simplify that denominator. What does it need? It needs 3. It currently has 1. So we're going to give it how many more? Two more n's. Two more n's gives us m to the fourth, third root of n squared, all over third root of n to the third. That now can be simplified. m to the fourth, third root of n squared, all over just dead. That is simpler. We made the numerator a mess, but we made the denominator rationalized. Last ones that we have to simplify here, we have to know how to use the conjugate. We've talked about this before. If I have an a plus b, we use an a minus b. We multiply by the conjugate. If I have an a minus b, we multiply by an a plus b. What do I mean? Well, here's 5 over 4 minus root 3. The problem here is I cannot just multiply top and bottom by root 3. Like, why not? Well, that would fix this one, but it would also distribute to the 4. So we would end up with that radical 3 stuck there. Well, what do we do? Well, we did this before. See, if we go back to that previous example, right here, this thing was super crazy. But if we multiply it by its opposite, all of the radicals disappeared. So a plus b, a minus b, all of them disappeared. If I go to that first example, a plus b, a minus b, we multiply by the opposite. Okay, so not technically opposite, but the conjugate of the denominator for minus root 3 would be 4 plus root 3. And if I do that to the bottom, we do that to the top. Now we do need to multiply this out and clean it up. The top's the easy one. 5 times 4. 5 times root 3. Top's done. Bottom's a little trickier, so we're going to kind of do this and work it out. 4 times 4. 16. 4 times root 3. Minus root 3 times 4. And minus root 3 times plus root 3. Simplify. Square root of 9 is just 3. So the middle part, plus 4 and minus 4, those zero out. So I'm left with 16 minus 3, or 13. It did what we wanted. See, multiply the denominator by its conjugate. If it's a plus, we use a minus. If it's a minus, we use a plus. This next one. A little crazier. Where's the issue? Well, that denominator, we want to rationalize. I cannot just multiply that by the square root of 3. I can't just multiply it by the square root of 5. I have to multiply it by its conjugate. a plus a minus. Do it to the bottom. Let's do it to the top. Now this one we're going to have to work out both top and bottom. So let's see, how about the square root of 10 minus the square root of 6 minus the square root of 15 minus the square root of 9. We will simplify the square root of 9 and write that as just a 3. 
The rest of it stays messy. On the bottom, square root of 5 times the square root of 5, square root of 25. We will rewrite that as just 5. Minus 5, nope. 5 and 3 multiply, minus root 15. Plus root 15. Minus square root of 9. Square root of 9 just becomes a 3. So, what do we have on the top? Uh, square root of 10 minus square root of 6 minus square root of 15 minus 3 all over 5 minus 3 or 2. It is still a mess, but at least the denominator is simplified. Technically, we'd probably put that 3 first because we put the radicals, we put those crazies at the end. Um, I don't know that that would really clean anything up this time, so I wouldn't worry about it. Let's keep going. So this is just going to summarize. If I have a over root b, we multiply the radical in the denominator. Give it what it needs. I multiply by another radical b. On the top, a times radical b. On the bottom, just simplifies to a b. If it's a 3, well then give it what it needs. It needs 2 more to give it 3 to come out. But you must also still do that to the top. If we have a b plus radical on the bottom, we multiply by the conjugate, b minus. If we have a b minus on the bottom, we multiply by the conjugate, b plus. So this is kind of a summary of all of the simplifying rules that we have uh, for this section. I would write this down. This would go on my note card. If there's anything I'm not sure about, this is what would go on my note card. So be careful with that. Last but not least, we need to know how to simplify this. There are two ways of doing this. Um, the book will do this. They'll say, look, the 6 and the 2 are both divisible by 2. So they'll factor out a 2, leaving us with 3 plus the square root of 5. And then they'll simplify the 2 with the 4, making it 1 over 2. So they would leave it as 3 plus root 5 all over 2. And I'm fine with that, and I won't mark that wrong. Or, this is kind of the way I think about it, is saying I can split this. A plus B over C is the same thing as A, A over C plus B over C. Like, that's weird. No, we do it all the time. Normally what we would do is we'd say if these two have the same denominator, we can add the tops. But that means we could also split it apart. These both can be split apart to what? 6 over 4 plus... 2 root 5 over 4. And then simplify what we can. 6 over 4 becomes 3 over 2 plus 2 over 4 becomes 1 radical 5 over 2. And I'd be fine with that. Now you could write that as one big fraction now since they have a common denominator, but I'm fine with either of those answers. I just like the idea of splitting it. Um, to me that's easier than trying to factor the top and then try to uh, cancel out what they have in common. It's a choice, okay? Here's another one. See, this one, I would definitely split this apart. So I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. I would put it as 5y over 6y minus the square root of 8y squared over 6y. I'm going to split it apart. Because the first one simplifies really nicely. These both have a y. Cancel out. Second one, we do need to simplify the square root of 8y squared. Um, square root of 8, if 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, this becomes a 2 with a square root of 2 left inside. The square root of y squared, out comes a y. So this all becomes 2y root 2. So what does that do for me? I can simplify the 2 with the 6. Making that, let's see, 5 over 6 minus 1 over 3. And the y's will cancel. And we're left with a root 2 on the top. That's how I would do it. Um, I guarantee I lost somebody there. I'm going to rewrite this real quick. So this becomes 2y root 2 over 6y. The 2 over 6 becomes 1 over 3. The y's cancel. 
So 1 root 2 over 3, or just root 2 over 3. And that's how I would leave it. If you did it the way the book does, they will have that as um, 5 minus 2 root 2 all over 6. Um, doesn't hurt my feelings, but I don't think that's any simpler. Um, I actually think this is a little more simplified on the left, but I could see an argument either way. So not a huge deal, but I would split them. If you don't like that, feel free to do it the way the book does.